let us today study about our nervous system the nervous system is made up of the nervous tissue and the nervous cells that is the neurons so each neuron is made up of axon a long tubular fiber and a main body that is cytosol so we have done it last time now many axons when they come together of different neurons the long uh, part of the uh, neuron when they come together and are covered by a fiber shape then it is called a nerve it is the size of your thumb thickness is like your thumb and they carry the information from the brain and spinal cord to all the parts of our body and also vice versa that is the information or messages from the different parts of the body to the brain and spinal cord now it looks like a whitish fibers this nerves they carry the electrical impulse now there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves the cranial nerves are the nerves coming from the brain and there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves that is the nerves arising from the spinal cord so there are 12 uh, pairs of cranial nerves they are always in pairs and 31 pair of the spinal nerves now organs of the central nervous system now we are learning about the cns that is the central nervous system the main organs are the brain and the spinal cord the brain is protected by a bony structure called the skull or it is also called cranium along with the skull and the cranium there are three membranous structures or membranes called meninges the brain is well protected by all the structures first is the skull then is the meninges are the membranous uh, structures three and the or they are called coverings or membranes and in between these meninges or membranes there is a fluid called cerebro spinal fluid so if you have fall your head hurts get hurt somewhere it is well protected the brain is well protected by all these structures and this acts like a shock absorber the cerebral uh, cerebrospinal fluid acts like a shock absorber now the brain is as soft as butter so it's a nervous tissue which is very soft and it has to be well protected okay uh, when whenever you walk or dance it has friction between the meninges and the other uh, this skull and this protects it also from friction during we dance or walk okay now coming to the parts of the brain the brain is divided into three main parts the first one is cerebrum then is cerebellum and and the third part is medulla oblongata the cerebrum forms the biggest part of the brain the largest part of the brain and it is having lot of ridges and furrows that is uh, like convoluted like maggie noodles now this seems to increase the surface area of the uh, brain to occupy more neurons in it so here we can see the brain structure this is the biggest part is cerebrum this you can see here is the cerebellum 
and below this is the medulla. The medulla will just further form the spinal cord. Now, if you see this way externally and internally, internally it is divided as well as externally by a longitudinal furrow or a ridge. So this is divided into the right side and the left side. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body and the left side of the brain will control the right side of the body. This I'm holding it as if it is in a textbook. So internally it is also connected, the cerebrum is connected by or some tissue which will pass on the message or information from this side of the cerebrum to this side of the cerebrum. Now when you take one part, one hemisphere if you take inside here there are many ridges and furrows and inside the outer part is called a cortex and inner part is called a medulla in the cerebrum similarly the cerebellum will also have two hemispheres right hemisphere and left hemisphere they are also connected together uh, means uh, the messages pass from this side left side to the right side to a part called pons Okay, so they are divided externally as well as inside. This cerebrum have more number of neurons than cerebellum and the medulla. Now, outer cortex is grey in colour because it contains the, it is called a grey matter or it contains the exo, uh, cytons. Now, if you have seen a, a neuron, this is the long portion which is exon. Now, the grey matter is because of this part, cyton, is present in this area. So, it gives a grey colour. So, it is called grey matter. And inside here of the cerebrum is the white matter. That means it is having all these parts. This part means the axons of the neurons lie inside in the brain, in the medulla, which gives a white color because they are covered by a myelinated sheet, so it gives a white appearance. Okay, so there are many functions of the cerebrum, right from remembering your phone numbers or remembering your first standard teachers or everything, reasoning, logical thinking, then emotions. When you get hurt, you feel like crying or all these emotions. Then also perception, all the sense organs send the impulse there and the brain interprets it whether it is uh, the water is cold or hot for your bath or whether it is uh, cold or hot outside your temperature. Anything what you feel, the texture of a uh, material substances, whether it is soft, hard, all these is perception center is in the cerebrum also your problem solving or remembering telephone numbers remembering then intelligence memory everything the cerebrum is concerned with all these functions now coming to the next part that is cerebe cerebellum or again it is divided into two sides and the cerebellum is concerned with some important uh, functions, this is the cerebrum, cerebellum, it is also convoluted and it is concerned with the body's balance that because of that you are able to dance, judgment or walk properly without wobbling. Now what happens when a person drinks alcohol, it affects the cerebellum because cerebellum is concerned with the body's balance, uh, the, it is disturbed so a person who is alcoholic he will wobble or he will not be able to walk uh, properly so that is because the effect is felt on cerebellum now the next one is also cerebellum coordinates the muscular movement on both the sides of the body and that is why when we walk you can see uh, this hand moves up with when we walk okay you can try it at home 
both the side there is coordination when you walk, dance, anything you do there is coordination that is also controlled by the cerebellum. Now coming to the medulla oblongata, it is located at the posterior of the cerebellum and it goes below into this uh, as the spinal cord in the vertebral column. So it is controlling very important functions in our body that is the involuntary actions like heartbeat, then respiration. So here it is just here below at the back of your neck and if any problem happens there a person dies immediately because this is control, controlling all the main part functions like heartbeat and breathing it also controls when you eat something it has to go in the elementary canal in a proper way so this is also controlled by the medulla movement of the food in the elementary canal now coming to the spinal cord Spinal cord is just the continuation of the medulla oblongata and it is a cylindrical soft structure just like the brain. It is also covered by the bony structure instead of skull it is the vertebral column there and it is also covered by the three meninges and the cerebrospinal fluid. So when you have a fall the body defends in the when we have a, when we have any jerk, it is acting like a shock absorber. Uh, so otherwise we would have had many more injuries when you walk, run, etc. Now spinal cord is covered or uh, protected by the vertebral column, and each. There are 31 segments, 31 parts. Now when I say 31 parts, the whole spinal uh, vertebral column is divided into 31 parts. It is not like a refill in the pen, like one whole cell, uh, this vertebral column is not a stick, a stick. Okay, it is made into parts and that is why we can bend, we can turn sideways, all these actions are possible because there are broken into parts and in between there is like elastic like ligament so that allows us to bend forward backward okay all the sides so there are about in each of this segment there arise a pair of nerves and these are a pair of nerves because there are 31 segments from each one there is one pair so we have 31 pairs from each segment it is so we have 31 uh, cranial uh, spinal nerves now what these do, the spinal nerves take the message from the spinal cord to the parts of the body and also brings back the message, first it brings back, uh, first it brings the message back to the spinal cord, vice versa. Similarly cranial nerves, there are 12 pairs, this will take the message from the brain to the parts of the body and bring back. Now spinal cord has a, one more important feature that it, it also controls a special reflex action. Now what is a reflex action? It's different from uh, what we feel, touch, see. They are the normal response which uh, it is about 150 meters per second. It goes in our body. Now in the reflex action what happens is It is very automatic, quick and also certain action, certain response to a sensory stimulus. The stimulus can be anything in the environment. Now these occur unconsciously. We don't even know that it has occurred. I will just give an example. There is no involvement of the brain. Brain is not involved in this reflex action. Brain is not involved in all other responses of our body. Brain and spinal cord both are passing the message to the parts of the body and it comes back. Your brain is not involved. So there are two types. One is natural reflex action and one is acquired reflex action. So in natural reflex action what happens? 
this example if you touch a candle or a hot object on the gas uh, vessel within a second you have already removed your hand without you knowing it now this is because the message goes from the receptors in the hand skin it goes through the spinal cord and without going to the brain it comes back so your by the time your hand is already removed so this is actually to prevent from damage to that organ so reflex actions are natural some of them like uh, removing your hand immediately after touching something what is bad or hot now sometimes they are acquired acquired in the sense when if you are driving your bike or car and suddenly a person comes in front of you your brain will not work for it spinal cord will give a fast message back and you will stop the car so that the person is not harmed so the quick and sudden responses which are happening unconsciously where only the spinal cord is involved and not the brain a call reflex action now the path is followed from the receptor to the motor uh, spinal nerve which takes the message to the spinal cord and there the interneuron or the association neuron will pass the message to the motor neuron and it will come back to the hand the motor neuron or the nerve and your hand will be removed so this path is called reflex arc okay so this uh, path is called reflex arc and this will be more faster than the normal response which is about 150 meters per second so this will be faster than that even when something pricks you or when the mosquito bites you soon your hand will go there so these are some type of reflex actions okay so we'll be doing other different sense organs in the next class but right now after watching this you please do a small exercise given on page 100 and page 102 do it right now after seeing the video thank you